We all know the challenges of basement fires, and those challenges are magnified in commercial buildings. Welcome to this segment of Fire Engineering Training Minutes. My name is Paul Dansback. This segment will be the kickoff of several segments of Fire Engineering Training Minutes that talks about commercial buildings, the construction features, access to commercial buildings that create challenges for the fire service. My name is Glenn Corbett. I'm technical editor of Fire Engineering Magazine. So in this series of commercial buildings, we're going to cover a lot of different issues uh, from type of construction, as Paul mentioned, which specifically in this case, we're going to spend a lot of time in type three construction, which is, in fact, basically low bearing masonry walls with uh, with wood structural interiors, floor system, roof system, things like that. We're not going to talk about today about the new version of Type 3. Uh, we're going to talk about the old school, in this case, very old buildings, at least 100 years old, and we're going to see a lot of different kind of features about them. So, Paul, um, we're going to take a tour through Rutherford, New Jersey. Um, we're going to look at a bunch of buildings. Um, and I think you would agree that there's a whole bunch of, even just if we talk about the type of construction, the way they're built, there's a lot of different things we have to think about because these buildings are old, right? And that things, listen, just like people, we don't stay up for 100 years without having problems. So a lot of these buildings have been altered, modified, renovated, all those kind of things. So, Yeah, Glenn, we're going to talk about uh, ordinary construction. We're going to look at some buildings uh, in a downtown commercial district. Uh, these buildings are very similar to downtown commercial districts uh, throughout the country. Um, and, and once you know where your building problems are, the construction features, the alterations, which create challenges in, in many instances um, to the fire service. Uh, one of the segments will deal with exterior access to basements, whether it be through sidewalk doors um, or hatchways or a door that may lead uh, to a conveyor system to move goods and materials out of the building. We all know the challenges of basement fires and those challenges are magnified in commercial buildings. Those challenges include access. There is limited access. There is limited opportunity for ventilation. Many times in these buildings, there is a significant fuel load in the basement. That fuel load oftentimes creates maze-like conditions as a result of the storage. And the firefighter is stretching that initial attack line. When they open that door to the interior, interior stairways to the basement, they're stretching that line through the mouth of the dragon. There's no other way. When they open those doors, the products of combustion are coming up at them. So that is one of the more significant challenges that firefighters are, are going to face. That basement fire is a very significant challenge in these type three buildings in your commercial district. And so a really important part of this, Paul, is making sure that we understand the uniqueness of each of these, even though we can throw a blanket over and say, yeah, type threes are, as I mentioned earlier, typically load bearing masonry walls, typically wood structural uh, system inside, each one of them is unique in a way, right? And that the fact remains that the most important thing we're gonna do is pre-planning. Yes. We're gonna get into these buildings ahead of time, document not just, you know, the typical stuff you see in a pre-plan with, you know, size, height, stories, all the, the, the generic kind of stuff we do for any building, but we really need to pay a lot of attention to, specifically to unique features of a building, things, things that have been changed, things that are missing, things that were added. Uh, for, uh, again, the, the, the spectrum is wide here. We have situations perhaps where uh, loads have been placed in the building that weren't there when the place was built, meaning like heavy safes or a large air conditioning unit on the roof, all those kind of things. So we want to make sure that we're very particular about that. And one thing we're going to see in these videos, Paul, it's really important, I think, and it's not common across the country, is the fact that we all see, again, we all see the type three building from the front, from the A side. It's the C side that matters a lot. And in this case, you're gonna see something somewhat unique, not completely unique, but somewhat unique, in which the back door entrances, the, the rear of the property has all been identified by address. Because you know and I know, we go to a building, it could be a strip mall of type two construction, which door do we go in? Which is the store for this one? When you're on the back side, you can't see the front. So you're gonna see some unique things. It might be a tip for other fire prevention bureaus across sure. the country to add signage like we'll see in these videos. Yeah, the signage that Glenn's talking about um, is certainly gonna go a long way uh, to, for firefighter accountability and fire ground management. When you identify 
uh, where the door access is in the building, whether it be a first floor commercial space. It also has the address on it. So you're no, you know when you're forcing that door, it's actually a, a door to the address that you've responded to. Uh, Glenn makes a real good point on, on pre-planning. I think the other component part of pre-planning is the pre-plans that are less formal. And, and I'm going to say this, and I know it's rather philosophical, never waste a run. And that's, that's a, a tough philosophical chew at 2 o'clock in the morning. But take the opportunity when you're at buildings, whether it be a commercial building, a multiple dwelling, a high-rise building, take the opportunity when you're there for the unattended cooking call, when you're there for the CO call or, or even uh, assist the EMS call, Learn a little bit about the building. How do we get to the basement? How do we get to the roof? Which stairway leads to the roof? Where are the sprinkler valves, right? There's a whole list of things that we can put into the back of our mind that we can learn about a building when we're there for the routine calls. And I, I, this has happened to me um, uh, on, on more than several occasions where you, you're at the call, you're at a building for an incident, and you recall, oh, I remember how to get to the basement. Oh. You know, I know how to get to the roof, right? There's a bulkhead door, there's a gooseneck ladder, right? It's, a, it's amazing the amount of information that the brain can store and recall when you're at an incident. Right, exactly. And that's, that's so critical here because if you study, of course, as we all do, you study past incidents in other cities and things like that, you learn about hidden dangers or hidden issues in a building that no one knew about. You know, we, we're going to mention the 23rd Street fire in New York where 12 firefighters were killed. Uh, in a building that actually had fronts on two different streets. And we'll right. see that issue as well. Right. That coordination uh, between companies and things like that of where, where the seat of the fire is and where we're accessing the building, all this stuff matters. And the only way we're gonna be better, best prepared for that is get in those buildings ahead of time, learn from what's in there. And again, perhaps do a walkthrough at two o'clock in the morning after the incident's over, just to get a, gen a much better sense of I mean, general sense, we're a better sense of exactly how the building's laid out and what specific problems that we might see for ourselves in there. You're absolutely right, Glenn. And I think what's important for all of us in the fire service to understand is this. The 23rd Street collapse is certainly a historic event. There's a lot of attention, and rightly so, that has been paid to that incident. And that building, you don't need to go to a major urban environment to find a building like that. One of the buildings that we're going to look at fronts on two streets, and it's not even the back street, it's a side street. The building is uniquely shaped. Through the life of the two structures, they've been joined into one that share a common basement. That creates very significant fire ground management op um, uh, obstacles, as well as firefighter accountability issues. So it's important for us to understand, listen, Rutherford is a community of about 18,000 people. We're a bedroom community in New York City. Once you know what you're looking for, what the obstacles are, what the construction features are. You go out, you're going to find them in your response district. There is no doubt in my mind. There is tremendous common thread in the way buildings are constructed, altered, maintained, or in some instances, not maintained. Right. And that's, that's a big issue for us is that, you know, we deal with, as you know, Paul, we deal with every building from cradle grave, right? And you know, the, a lot of these older type threes are, are structures that haven't been well maintained, that are structurally unstable to begin with. And so we throw a fire into the mix. We throw our streams and water uh, collection into the mix. We could potentially create our own problems by not understanding, again, how well the building has been maintained, how well the building, um, you know, has been repaired when necessary. So this is, and all this boils down to, you know, making sure we get out there, looking at them, knowing ahead of time when something is dangerous. You mentioned about the basement uh, that's shared by two, two connected structures on two sides, uh, uh, not even back to back, but on a side street and a main street, right? That a basement fire there might come in for the one address, it might come from the other. You can understand the, what would it be being an office here in the Rutherford Fire Department would have an issue of, of course, knowing about coordination of how we're gonna access the fire in the basement, given the fact that firefighters might try to attempt to access it from both sides and stuff, where you've got opposing streams, all that kind of stuff. You need to know that ahead of time. You don't need to learn it the night of the fire, right? That's the right. whole point. So given that this is a fire engineering training minutes, and by now I'm sure you've guessed that Glenn and I could talk about this subject for hours. We're going to cut this short at this point. So please look forward to the next number of fire engineering training minute segments that Glenn and I have prepared for the fire service. 
Along with Paul, I want to thank you for watching our Building Construction Training Minutes for Fire Engineering Magazine. Um, we've, we're trying to give you as much information as possible in the shortest time possible. So please, watch them, absorb what we're saying, and of course, keep yourself safe.